Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to uh, the Moodle MOOC and uh, our presentation for today. Uh, my name is Nellie Deutsch, and I'm going to be moderating. I am not Benjamin. You will see me as Nellie after um, our speaker begins. Um, I'd like to um, introduce our speaker, but before I do, I'd like you to add in the chat box where you're from, what you're doing here. Anything else you'd like to add, feel free to use the chat box uh, throughout the session. Um, write, share, uh, keep yourself awake uh, if necessary, but uh, use the chat box. You can chat as much as you want, something you can't do in a live uh, in a real classroom, but you can online because we don't hear you, uh, which is great. All right, so uh, let's get started. Our speaker for today, um, remember that um, the uh, presentations, the live presentations, uh, part of the MOOC uh, are actually based on transpersonal development, um, which uh, is the whole person. It's you as a learner, as a person, so that uh, you can learn as much as you can about yourself. And I think that uh, Benjamin is a great example of someone who explores uh, within and uh, teaches accordingly. So Benjamin Lee Stewart, I just found out your middle name, uh, holds a master's degree in education curriculum and instruction from Grand Canyon University. He is currently uh, doing his uh, doctorate. He's a full-time EFL teacher in Mexico and he's also a researcher at the University of Escalantes. I hope I said that correctly after all this time. And um, as I said, he is a uh, personal development researcher and he is looking for things within himself so that he can improve uh, the learning experience for his students. His educational philosophy is to facilitate learners in becoming more independent. And I think that's really, really important. And to form valid, reliable, and unbiased arguments um, and to provide innovative solutions, something new to real life problems. Make decisions that resolve cognitive conflict by developing understandings through a difference of opinion or perspective and create innovative ways of communicating with others. So before we can do that, we have to do it ourselves, which is so important. And I want to remind you of a great book uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it. It's called Teaching and Leading from the Inside Out. In other words, first we take care of ourselves and then we could be a lot better for our students. His role is to move students, learners from being dependent to independent and to interdependent individuals who are not afraid to take chances, share their successes and failures with others and who are concerned for the well-being not only of themselves, but for others as well. His goal is to help others become more daring, sharing, and caring individuals. If you're interested in learning more about Ben's initiative, listen to the presentation. Ben is the founder of Teachers for Interactive Language Learning, T-I-L-L, -L, and there's the link now, I shared, if you go to the top, you'll be able to copy this chat. You'll see that there's access to the PowerPoint that you'll be seeing, uh, Benjamin's PowerPoint presentation, which is right here. There's also a link to um, the current course, the Moodle MOOC, and also to the syllabus, and there's a link to the Moodle for teachers site and then Benjamin's oh and then Benjamin's uh, claim if you want to get a badge I've added the code to claim your badge so anyone at the end of the session can click on that and claim their badge actually you can do it right now and anyone who um, access the recording will be able to get the badge too and the badge is from connected educators through the United States uh, 
Department of Education. All right, so Ben, I'm going to uh, give you the mic, and I'm really excited about this session. Uh, so thank you for joining us. And I see you don't want to use the uh, webcam. And hopefully my audio is coming through. If you can just give me a thumbs up just to make sure uh, that the audio is, in fact, coming through. Excellent. I was having some problems getting in, actually, so I'm, I'm crossing my fingers, uh, hoping that I won't have issues with uh, technology. Um, but uh, I want to thank everyone for being here. And uh, again, very happy to be here to uh, share some, uh, some technology, some things that I'm uh, working through this, uh, this semester. And uh, the topic uh, that I'd like to share with you today, blending technology and feedback for English as a foreign language uh, writers, is really meant to um, really meant to provoke some ideas, not necessarily uh, so. me dictating or... Oh, okay, hello, uh, Nelly. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, hopefully my audio is coming through. If you can just give me a thumbs up just to make sure uh, that the audio is, in fact, coming through. Excellent. I was having some problems getting in, actually, so I'm, I'm crossing my fingers, uh, hoping that I won't have issues with uh, technology. Um, but uh, I want to thank everyone for being here, and uh, again, very happy to be here to uh, share some uh, some technology, some things that I'm uh, working through this uh, this semester. And uh, the topic uh, that I'd like to share with you today: blending technologies and feedback for English as a foreign language uh, writers is really meant to um, really meant to provoke some ideas, not necessarily me dictating or prescribing certain ways to use technology, but simply uh, a kind of a show and tell, if you will, just um, uh, an opportunity, I think, to uh, hear from you as far as what technologies you're using, and uh, as, as I share some of my thoughts uh, with you over the next uh, 40 minutes or so. I'm going to try uh, my best to leave some time at the end for questions. Um, but what I'd like to share with you today is uh, some of the technologies that I'm using in three classes that I'm currently teaching here at the university. Um, I teach at uh, the La Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes, which is a public university in beautiful Aguascalientes, Mexico. And I've been teaching here for about eight years, and I teach uh, a program for, uh, for uh, students who are studying to be teachers. We have an English as a foreign language training program, and it's a four-year degree uh, with an optional one-year propedeutic, which is basically an entry-level uh, year for those students who do not have a minimum English requirement to, to begin the first uh, semester. So uh, depending on the level of the student when they enter the university, uh, our de degree program can last anywhere from four to five years. So. Uh, I'd like to talk today with you about three different courses that I'm teaching. And before I do that, I would like to share just one slide. I don't have a lot of slides here, and uh, that was intentional because I'd rather uh, have time to ask questions, kind of interact with you, and uh, share some of the technologies that I'm uh, using this semester. Uh, but these are the three classes that I'm teaching this, uh, this semester. I'm teaching a first semester writing one class, which is actually the image to your right in the middle. I'm sorry, I'm left, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm also teaching a creative writing course, which is the image in the middle to, towards the right, kind of going out of order here. And I'm also teaching a course in applied linguistics, which is the image on the top left-hand corner of your screen with my, my thumb blocking the, the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, these are the groups that I'm uh, working with this, uh, this semester. And uh, these are uh, these uh, these are the groups that I'll be talking about. Now, the the first slide I want to show before I do a screen share and show some of the the technologies is the this image that I uh, designed for a talk just a, a week or so ago. And really, the basis of my talk today, even though I'm talking about blending technologies and feedback. It's basically this idea of sharing. And uh, I think one of the reasons why uh, I like to try to incorporate certain technologies in with my students is that because they're going to be future teachers themselves, 
uh, I am stressing the importance of them being able to share their experiences, share their difficulties that they're having in classes, successes with not only themselves within the class, but also other uh, students uh, outside of their class. And uh, some of the technologies and experiences that I'm trying to design for my students, I hope will uh, enable them to come in contact with other students um, as well. So one of the re one of the, the basis for for me that I feel that I uh, that I, I want to try to incorporate as many technologies as possible and have my students interact as much as possible is this idea of sharing. And a precursor to that is the simple notion that before you can even share, you have to care and you have to not only care about yourself but also care about those that you come in contact with. So uh, a lot of what we do in our classes. Uh, is really about trying to build a learning community within the, the class where students can uh, rely on each other and help each other and uh, they again they care about not only their own successes but uh, the, the successes of their classmates and if they can if they have this quality that they do care about not only themselves but others they also are willing to take risks they're willing to dare they're really willing to uh, to confront both successes and challenges and and learn from those so that they are uh, it's very important and I work a lot with my students uh, with the technologies that we use uh, that they feel comfortable taking risks and that they that it's okay to uh, to ask questions you know and, and it's okay if their things don't quite work out the way that they had planned um, this is all part of the, the learning process so um, I, I wanted to start my presentation with those two with these three ideas of caring, daring, and sharing that really is part of my whole talk and I think it's very important to have these qualities so that these students learn to accept and develop these qualities uh, as they, uh, they continue using technologies to continue their own learning. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and try to do a screen share now and I'm going to start talking about the first class. Uh, writing one. This is the first semester. So I'm going to go ahead and activate screen sharing and hopefully this will work out okay. And maybe Nelly, if you don't. Okay, so if you just let me know, uh, Nelly, if you see my screen. Uh, let's see here. Oh. So I'm trying to activate my screen share. So I hope that this will work. I did. I ran tests all week uh, to make sure everything was in working order on this computer. So let's see if this works. Okay. Okay, so if you could just let me know, uh, Nelly, if you see my screen. I have uh, my Canvas learning management system up, and I'm looking at writing one. So hopefully you can see this. So I don't know, Nelly, if you could just let me know. I don't. I hate to continue on if no one can see it. <laughs> Okay, so I, I just looked back in the chat. Looks like you can't see it, so I'll continue. Uh, this is writing one, and I am using uh, Canvas, which is a learning management system this semester. And um, I try to incorporate basically what we do face to face because all my classes that I'm going to talk about are face to face classes. I try to complement or create an online space with content that is directly related to what we do face to face. So it basically serves as a complement to. Uh, the activities and the content that we discuss and interact with face to face. So uh, this first class, writing one, I'm going to show you just a few uh, of the technologies that I'm using and explain some of the ways in which I'm providing feedback for uh, these uh, for the writers in my first semester class. Uh, again, this is their 
first semester, and this is the first semester of the propedeutic program, the first year that they, they come into the uh, program. So they're going to have a TOEFL paper-based score of roughly 360 to 440, more or less. Uh, that's, the I would say, an A, A1, maybe a, between A1, A2 level. Uh, so uh, this is this is uh, the content that we have here, and I've divided up, divided it up into weeks. And uh, the first thing I'd like to show you is a Charlie Chaplin movie that that we used from the very beginning. And this was the first week. Uh, the students were just getting used to uh, the university itself. I mean, this was all a new experience for them. Um, I, I got them signed up to Canvas. We worked through it together as far as creating accounts. And um, they were able to access this movie through Canvas. And this is one of the first activities that we did in class. And it's probably not going to show right now. Uh, I think my internet is a little bit slow. But basically, we ran uh, or we watched this Charlie Chaplin movie in class. And the students we, uh, were asked to identify certain nouns and verbs. So. It was very much kind of a, I would play a few minutes and pause it and ask, we would have a, a dialogue or discussion about what, uh, what was going on in the movie. And Charlie Chaplin movies are really nice, as you know, because there's not a lot of dialogue. It's more just action and, and there'll be some music in the background. So they can listen to the music and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a funny movie, so it's fairly entertaining, I think, for, for some of them, for most of the students. Uh, but they're able to, um, you know, we can have it discussion identifying certain nouns in the movie and it really doesn't take watching much of the movie to generate a lot of new vocabulary words which is essentially the, the the goal of this is to for them to start writing down new words new phrases new verbs that they come across with based on what they see in the movie and obviously any movie would would do but um, uh, I particularly like Charlie Chaplin movies uh, because they are entertaining and uh, and the students, we can use this as, as a way for students to generate new vocabulary. Now, moving on, I'm going to go back to the modules section. And another thing that we do uh, in, in the class, one of the first assignments was to do to draft a, a paragraph. So again, this is a first level, um, a level I would say A1 level, A2 level English language learner practicing writing skills. And so we're really focusing on both just the, the sent sentence level structure and paragraph structure. And so our, one of our first assignments was to construct a paragraph. And uh, what I tried to do here is to bring in some YouTube videos on uh, descriptive writing for them to look at and to view trying to give them as much input as possible. We don't spend a lot of time in class watching all these videos, but the expectation is that they try to watch some of these videos outside of class, kind of a, a flipped classroom approach where uh, a lot of this content is expected, uh, that they're expected to interact with this uh, some outside of uh, the class. So what I've tried to do here in this first assignment is to present this uh, with links and give them specific outcomes that they are to achieve for this first assignment. So uh, at the bottom also, I have included a tutorial. And throughout Canvas, what I've tried to do is sprinkle in videos that I create to help them navigate through Canvas, through the technology. So if I think that new tech is going to be difficult, whether it's creating an account or linking something into Canvas, creating a hyperlink, if I think it's if it could be difficult for the students, I'll try to insert a, a, vid, a video and make that available within Canvas so that they can seamlessly kind of work their way through and navigate through what they're expected to do in this learning management uh, system. So here's an example where I created a video in YouTube uh, where I explain how to create a Google Doc and link that Google Doc into Canvas. So. Now we're using Canvas as a learning management system, and we're also bringing in Google Docs, uh, which I'll show you uh, here in a few minutes how we're working with that. But again, it's, it's just trying to find the best way to integrate some of these technologies in a way that allows me to be more accessible to the students and also allows me to provide better, more timely 
feedback so that they can you know get the most out of their learning experience. So here what I've included is some videos, description as to what they need to accomplish for this task. And here at the bottom is a paragraph writing rubric. Now this is a par paragraph writing rubric that I'm sharing with them from the very beginning. And you'll notice at the top I have in parentheses first draft. So all of the the writing assignments, the products, primarily paragraphs that they have to write for this semester, they are always given one week to modify their first draft. So the expectation is that they are to create their first draft, and then they then I provide feedback, and then they change their uh, work uh, for the final draft. So this is kind of the process we go through for each project that students are ex expected to accomplish. So the rubric here, even though this is not the final uh, grade or this is not the final product, it's only the first draft, they are uh, aware of this writing rubric from the beginning. And this is something that we talk about at length in class, so they are clear on the expectations of, uh, as to what they need to, to, uh, to do as far as completing the first paragraph. Now, <clears throat> the, the paragraph, the rubric, I'm going to uh, explain a little bit about how uh, I, I go about converting the rubric to a grade. And so uh, I think one of the, um, one way that I've seen some teachers do it is simply just assign points for each criteria and then divide up the points and generate a grade uh, that way. But there's a, a really good book by Arter and McTighe that came out in 2001 called Scoring Rubrics in the Classroom. And uh, this book is uh, really good. Uh, they, they talk at length about how to approach rubrics and uh, precisely how to come up with a grading logic. That is, how to convert these points, the system, to an actual percentage grade. Um, and they mention that, that, um, that they don't use strict percentages when translating rubric scores to letter grades. They say that while a percentage model could work just fine for tests and quizzes, they are misleading when converting from rubrics to scores. So their preferred method is to use a, a grading logic. And I'm going to show you an example of the grading logic I would use to convert this, this rubric based on the point system to a grade. Now, um, I'm actually entering now into a different class, but this is the same logic regardless of the class or regardless of the rubric. If it's a six-point uh, rubric, this is the logic that I, I follow. Now, uh, hopefully you can see this. There are two sections here, and they're, the grading logic I present first as kind of a percentages, and then I, pre I present the same thing, uh, I think, a little bit easier to understand just by counting numbers. So for example, the first bullet point here says nothing lower than a two and at least three fours and 90 to 100 percent. So if we go back here, what I'm referring to here is this would be a four on the left hand side, then we have three, two, and one. So using these descriptors, if the students had in this case at least uh, three fours and uh, and no, no lower than a two, then they would receive somewhere between a 90 and 100 percent. So again, I'm not just calculating and running an average of the points. I'm actually just counting how many uh, fours that they have, how many threes, and so on to determine the grade. If you look at the next grading logic, it says no more than two scores lower than a three and at least one four. That would fall somewhere between an 80 and 89 percent and so on. The, th this ne the next one, no more than one one, and at least two threes would be somewhere between 70 to 79 percent. So this is, uh, this is one way to do it. Um, obviously not the only way to do it, but the idea here is to come up with some sort of logical um, conversion so that it makes the grading uh, fair and it makes it, uh, I think, more accurate to, to what they need to accomplish. And so uh, allows for if they do, they basically have to do well in all of the, the criterion really to get a good grade. So if they had all fours except for one, 
with one criteria, which would be a one, then that would uh, considerably lower the grade. So anyway, this is kind of one example here. And uh, again, I would recommend the book Scoring Rubrics in the Classroom by Arter and McTighe. And uh, there's certainly other books, but uh, this is one that, uh, that, I've, that I'm familiar with and uh, explains uh, this, the grading logic in depth and how to really manage uh, rubrics. Okay, so going back here, um, I want to talk just a couple more things here, and I'll, I'll try to pause for some questions. Uh, one thing that uh, we use in addition to Canvas, uh, I've mentioned now using certain uh, YouTube videos that I create that I incorporate in. I've talked about using movies, uh, Charlie Chaplin movie in this case, to bring in uh, to the learning experience for them to practice the writing skills. Um, another thing that we also use uh, is uh, Google Drive, Google Docs. And so I'm going to show you an example. In fact, I'm going to go back to the, the assignment and show you a list that the students had to create. So this very first assignment, the students actually had to go into Canvas and create a list, as it appears here, uh, in this page. Now, in Canvas, actually, this page serves as a wiki because all of the students, once they sign in with their account, they can edit this page and they can add text links just as they've done here. So I'm going to look at one of the students here as an example. And uh, this is Google Drive and Google Docs, I guess. Now it's Google Drive. And this is the just one example here how we use Google Drive. Now I think Google Drive or Google Docs is a, a really good document, a, a good tool for uh, writers as well as uh, instructors who are helping uh, writers because it offers a lot of ways for interaction and uh, ways of, of giving feedback. And I'm going to explain how I'm using it this semester. This is uh, an example of one student. And we've written so far this semester, we've written two paragraphs. And you'll notice here that I've included uh, the grading system. So this is the rubric and uh, the score that this student uh, achieved for this paragraph. Now, one thing that I did this uh, very first uh, paragraph, and this is the student's first paragraph here at the bottom, but I actually assigned uh, points to their first draft, even though it wasn't their final grade, because I wanted them to uh, see what the expectations were from very from the very beginning so if they for example had a, a poor first draft I wanted that to be reflected in the point system um, in the rubric uh, from the very beginning so that they have uh, a full week to figure out how to fix it and how to improve I didn't want any surprises for their final draft and they get their rubric score and it's not what they had expected so um, my uh, logic, my uh, reasoning is uh, to provide a score at the very, from the very beginning with the idea that when they go back and make the changes, that could uh, also, that could improve their, their score. And really what I'm looking for more than their first draft uh, approach is really how much they improve or how, how many changes that I'm really looking at. And when I provide feedback, and you can see here an example in the second paragraph, where I have included uh, my feedback. Now, you'll notice the comments that I make to this document. Uh, I'm using uh, an error code system. And the error code system that I'm using, I will show you here, um, is, is something that I came across. I, I remember when I was coming up with this um, this error code system, I was e emailing my, or not emailing, I was sending out to all of my personal learning network, asking questions, sharing the document that I had, uh, and I, I received a lot of good input from what others were doing. So it was, it's kind of a, um, a mixture of things that I came across in my readings, as well as my interactions with my personal learning network to kind of come up with an error code system that would uh, work best. So this, I'll just show you briefly the error code system that, that I'm using. <clears throat> and obviously, if anyone really wants a copy of this, they can contact me. But this is what I'm using uh, right now. And there are not a lot of codes on here, but there are 
there are a few. And I've broken it down into two sections. One I would just call, you know, uh, just regular codes for in individual errors that, uh, that the students make. And then at the bottom, I have what I call discourse codes. And uh, these are errors more at the, the discourse level. So if the students have problems with paragraph development, I might use uh, one of these four at the bottom, either meal or UN for unity, CR for coherence, or CN for cohesion. So I would use these for discourse. Uh, the ones up, up above would be just more for uh, isolated errors. And so this is what I'm using now. And uh, this seems like a lot of errors, but honestly, the I would say most of the errors uh, run between six and seven as far as the, the total number of errors that the students typically make. They, they run around seven or eight, I guess. Uh, so it, there's not a lot of variety in the types of errors that they make, but there are some that, are, are, uh, that happen quite a bit. And I think the three most common types of errors that I come across are run-on sentences, comma splices, and sentence fragments. And uh, so I'm not sure what your experiences are, but uh, here uh, where I'm, I'm teaching, and this is really at all levels, uh, these are the three that uh, I tend to focus on the most um, simply because they are uh, they are kind of common. So, so this is the error this is the error code system that I'm using. So all the students have a printed copy of this, and they keep this with them, and they start to become familiar very quickly with uh, the types of errors that uh, that they tend to commit uh, uh, through their writing. So um, this is how I typically give feedback. So most cases, I don't offer a long explanation to uh, the errors. I just I just put the uh, the abbreviation, and then I want them to kind of search and see if they can figure out how to fix it. Now, a lot of times it's it's obvious, um, but sometimes it's not. So uh, we will invariably in class discuss these errors as a group. Uh, we'll talk about certain patterns that I've seen as far as errors that are the group is com uh, committing. And so, um, you know, even though that this work is done outside of class and that I'm uh, providing feedback outside of class, uh, it's very much part of our discourse in class as far as uh, what we need to focus on as, group, as a group. Uh, the students know that if they don't know how to fix something, they can either uh, send me an email or comment directly in this document. And so uh, the idea here is that they kind of go through and detect some of these errors or find the errors themselves and try to correct them themselves as much as possible. Now, uh, with uh, if you're familiar with Google Docs, obviously there is a revision history. So you will you can see here uh, just how many uh, changes are being made and uh, it's used quite a, quite a bit even though in this case there are only two assignments um, you know the students go in and, and make a lot of edits uh, you can see where I have provided feedback and then they quickly make changes and uh, we kind of go back and forth between their changes and, and my feedback and then sometimes even we'll go through two or three cycles where I provide feedback they make changes I provide feedback and they make changes and uh, it really just uh, depends on how much the student really wants to work because here the technology allows me or affords me the opportunity to provide more feedback more uh, in a more timely fashion, uh, much more so than if I hadn't used uh, any technology at all. If I were just grading papers, uh, I certainly would not be able to give the amount of feedback uh, that I give as I do using these technologies. And so um, I think that uh, this particular uh, tool, Google Drive, has really been uh, a good way for me and my students uh, to work together in uh, resolving some of the, the errors that they uh, they are faced faced with. So, okay. Um, so uh, one more thing I wanted to share with this group, and uh, I'm going to go back to modules. And so we talked about Google Drive, we talked about YouTube videos, Canvas, we talked about uh, Aircode List that actually is a public document in Google Drive, and rubrics as well. The last bit of technology I'd like to share with you today in the same class is one we just did recently. And 
it was a storytelling activity. Now, this is a writing class, and what I was trying to achieve with this particular assignment was that I wanted my students to write something and then read aloud their writing. So we, we work uh, a lot with um, having our, I try to have my students read aloud their writing, that they can kind of listen to their own writing and, uh, and just to see how it sounds. And a lot of times when students are writing really long sentences and they get really uh, too long, sometimes when they read it aloud, they're able to detect that because if they can't express a sentence without taking a grasp of air, uh, typically they will uh, realize, well, maybe I need to change something if this sentence is going on and on and on and on. So um, with this particular assignment, I wanted to focus on storytelling. So I, I wanted them to look at an image, create a story, a, a very brief story, uh, basically one paragraph, where they, they uh, create a story on their own and then read their story aloud. And so the technology that I used for this assignment was VoiceThread. And so I brought in VoiceThread into Canvas, into this assignment, again, showing tutorials, how to create a VoiceThread account, how to upload an audio or video to VoiceThread, and then uh, the VoiceThread itself. This is that, the actual assignment. I'm going to go ahead and open up this VoiceThread. Again, the idea that I'm trying to... to uh, achieve here with Canvas is to incorporate as many videos as possible to try to help the student navigate uh, a lot of this uh, through all of this themselves. And because they are language learners and they are uh, at a basic level, uh, this also, I think, gives them more input so that they are uh, becoming more accustomed to, to not only my voice, but uh, other accents other uh, variations or varieties of English that they might not otherwise come in contact with. So uh, the idea is to really kind of bring in as, as much input as possible and variety so that they um, are familiar with that since they are going to be uh, to become English language teachers. So hopefully this will page will open up. It's a little bit slow right now. If not, we can view it in um, Canvas. So for the sake of time, I mean, I'll just try to do that here. I created a, an audio myself to give instructions. So the students had to listen to the instructions. And then they were given several images. And I hope you can see these images. I wanted to bring this up full screen. But these are the images that the students were asked to look and create a story. And I gave them three or four images, looks like three images where they were uh, able to choose. So whatever image they liked the most, they could uh, create their story around that image. But the idea was to create a story based on the image. So the, the, they could choose the perspective. For, for example, they could choose the, the older man pointing out to the sea or the ocean. They could talk about the story from his perspective. They could also, if they like, talk about the story from the uh, the children's perspective if they wanted to. Um, but the idea was that they were to use a lot of good nouns and adjectives, a lot of descriptive speech or descriptive uh, uh, language in the writing uh, to really bring this story to life as much as possible. So you see a lot, a lot of the students liked this, uh, this image. And I don't know if I play one of these, if you can even hear it. But I'll just play a second of it. Maybe. Yeah, it's probably not. It's probably gonna lack up here, but uh, it's funny because I I gave them the option if they wanted to uh, show their face, they could, or or they could just upload an audio, and I I encouraged them to do a video so that we could see their faces. What a lot of them did was do a video, but they didn't uh, step in front of the, the camera. So they actually just did an audio, but they they did a video, but just without showing their faces. So uh, most of them didn't want to show their face, which is fine. But um, the idea was to try to give them choices, right? So they could choose which image. They could choose really the story itself. And uh, they could choose whether or not they wanted to show their face or not uh, on, on this particular assignment. But I did want them to 
to create an audio or a video, uh, basically just reading their text, reading their text uh, to life, and uh, hopefully giving them kind of another perspective to their own writing. So whenever they do write, they they see that the words that they write and you know they mean something that um, that again they have uh, significance and in this case uh, can be used to tell a, a compelling story. So. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the last bit of technology that I'll uh, talk about for this particular class. I know this yeah, perhaps asked, it's a lot here to uh, going pretty quickly through this, but I'm going to pause now. I'm going to go back to the uh, to WizIQ, and I'm going to stop my screen share, and uh, would like to take some questions if anyone has anything they want to add or comment or question about. Um, I don't know if we can do mics or do you'd like just to ask a question in the chat? Okay, that's a bit annoying, but okay. Um, there were a few comments. I don't know if you I'm can doing, see that um, in the chat you box. Have, have I'm sorry, Nelly, could uh, you repeat that question? Sorry, Nelly. Um, I didn't quite catch that. Could you uh, repeat the, the question? Uh, I don't have a headset, but I can mute my mic. Okay, Heather has a question here. Do I do I use? Uh, technology to support peer editing and peer evaluation. Um, I I do a little I do in other classes that I haven't come uh, that I haven't uh, talked about yet. Uh, in this particular class, though, most of the peer and self editing happen in class. In fact, virtually all of what we do in face to face uh, is uh, with regard to peer and self correction is done face to face because since they are new students into the university. I'm also trying them to, I'm trying to have them know each other or get to know each other since most of them don't, or they, you know, this is the first time that they've had a class together. And so uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, have them begin this first semester working together a lot. Um, I, I do correct in class, but not, not a lot. Most of my correction comes after they have self-corrected and after they have um, corrected with their peers. One thing I haven't mentioned is after about, after I guess the third or fourth week of class, I paired up my groups. So I, ha I, I grouped my stronger students with the weaker students and basically assigned them as a per per uh, permanent partner. Um, every day they are to work with their partner. So a lot of times students will ask me questions and I'll respond by asking, well, have you asked your partner? Uh, because I really want them to work it out first to see if they can work it out uh, and come to an understanding before they, they ask me. So that's been kind of the, um, the approach that I've taken with this particular class. Um, and in general, I try to do that with my other groups as well. I, I again, try to have them help each other. Um, and, you know, sometimes when it's been my experience that when students are correcting each other online, uh, we get into issues of like etiquette and the way in which we express and help each other and, and that's a whole nother discussion, uh, especially when you're language learners. Um, sometimes if the language is not just right, uh, there could be a, a poor interpretation and so this, I, I'm not against it. I think it's uh, certainly uh, an option, but um, for me right now, I tend to try to handle the peer and self-correction face-to-face um, and, um, you know, and then take care of the, I usually address the feedback myself outside of class. There are some exceptions, though. Yeah. Thank you, Heather, for the question. So, um, yeah, what I mean was, any other what I do, questions? and it really works well, 
is that I have them do the work. In other words, they should. Yeah, okay, so Nelly, you're asking uh, why not share the Google Drive doc uh, with the whole class. And there are, um, yeah, I mean, we could do that. I mean, there we could, I could do some writing assignments where the whole group contribute to a, a Google Drive uh, document. Um, I haven't done that as of yet, um, as far as, the next step. I had some ideas this semester with applied linguistics, but um, but I haven't really, oh, that's not what you mean. Okay. Um, that's the reason why. So could you elaborate on the question? They would share all their. Uh, uh, writing assignments like with one another each one of them so if I've got 40 students and I do I've got a class of say 39 all 39 assignments are shared on Google Drive they do it they just add one another what I do um, you know the list that you saw in canvas is a list of all my students and each one of them created their own Google Drive document or they, they they basically created their own Google Drive and so they created a document in their own Google Drive and all of, uh, and all of the students have access to see all of their other students work in fact that's one of the things that I encourage all of my students to do is to see not only their own work but I asked them have you seen the work of your classmates have you seen how I am giving feedback to the rest of, uh, of the group so my my feedback that I'm giving is transparent as far as the the entire group can see how I uh, give feedback and so yeah each student has their own document I don't create them uh, I, I show them how to do it but I don't uh, I don't create so they share their yeah, yeah, they share the link. Now, there are two types of sharing, right? You can share the link so others can just view it, or you can share the document where others can go in and make edits. What I was talking, um, what I was uh, referring to earlier was that the, all of them share their documents, and that the link that I showed in Canvas is just allows anyone can see it. In fact, anyone can go into Canvas and view all of this information and all the information from my students so it's all open and the students can see all of the work of their classmates um, what I have not done is have my students share their documents so others can edit the uh, each other's documents and and um, you know that's certainly another option but I haven't done that uh, yet so okay any other questions in fact, we're getting fairly close to running out on time. I, we're not going to have time to see uh, a lot of other uh, examples. Um, but I don't know if anyone has any uh, other questions before I comment on a few more things. Um, okay, I, I don't, I'm probably not going to have much time. Uh, to show you this, but I, I do want to mention the class that I have in cre creative writing. I have a uh, an academic and creative writing course, which is a third semester course, and uh, we are also using blogs. And uh, this particular group, uh, we are I, all of my students are uploading all of the products that they do in their own personal blog, and I am having them interact and comment on each other's blogs. So. Um, the the uh, products that they have to create are essays. Uh, so far, they've had to create uh, business type correspondence, like business formal emails, uh, purpose statements, 
uh, resumes. They created a, a resume in LinkedIn and create a public uh, resume so that they can show potential employees, employers uh, in the future. Um, so in that particular class, we're also using Google Drive, but we're also bringing in blogs and in this case LinkedIn so that they can begin thinking about uh, putting together a portfolio, a professional portfolio, and a resume that they can work on throughout their not only college days or their college career here, but also beyond when they get into the field, instantly keep their resume up to date. So um, those are some other technologies that I'm using for that particular, uh, particular group. Um, and uh, so far they've been responding quite well. Uh, they've been really original. Um, again, if you are interested in seeing some of uh, this work, uh, I'll, let me include a link into the chat box where you can find all the classes that I teach. Uh, they're all open. They're all online. You don't need to create an account to see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste here this link. Maybe my internet uh, connection here is a bit slow. OK, so I included the link here in the chat box. And uh, uh, this is a website where you'll be able you can see all of the courses that I offer online. And um, you know, feel free to contact me if you have any questions or uh, would like further explanations for anything that I'm uh, currently doing. Uh, but uh, that pretty much concludes what I probably going to have time to talk about if someone has any questions or any additional comments that they'd like to make about either what I've presented or if you just simply want to share some of the technologies that have been working well for you and your uh, experiences. And uh, I didn't ask this at the beginning. I guess I should have. Uh, for those of you in the chat room, uh, how many of you are teaching uh, and are teaching uh, English language learners or language learners in general? And how many of you are focusing on, on writing? If you are focusing on uh, the, the writing skill? Okay. So yeah, and if, if anyone wants to leave their uh, their uh, Twitter hashtag or their Twitter uh, handle uh, in the chat room, thank you. Thank you so uh, feel free to, if you want to share one of your websites thank that you are affiliated with, feel free to include that in the chat as well. Um, I want to thank everybody for, for being here and uh, certainly uh, am open to talking more about this if anyone is interested. When I wrote Benjamin Stewart Blended Learning, I got all of you. But if and my uh, Twitter hashtag, Stewart, I had a problem. I'll so, put it there um, in the chat. The L, the L does help too. So Benjamin, I think Twitter would be the easier uh, handles B N L E E Z. Does, but, um, he's uh, feel free to uh, contact me via Twitter, and we can. Uh, and what else? Uh, if you want to discuss uh, anything? If you have an about me. Be more than happy to do so. For that too about me the so thank you everybody thank you very much Nellie I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, speak I'll mute my mic so you can speak <laughs> oh great all right I couldn't find that one okay great wonderful oh Andre look what he found Thank you. That's great. Thank you. But that's not the one. It's on. It moved from there. But I think there's information there too. Benjamin, have you considered joining the IWE uh, with your students, or it's not part of the plan for the writing? <laughs> yeah sure sure yeah it's 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 completely yeah 
anyways, right now we've got students from, it's college students from Korea, China, um, France, Japan, Iran is trying to get in. Uh, it's a bit problematic right now, but yeah, we've got quite a few countries. All right, so thank you very much, uh, Benjamin, and everyone for joining us. And uh, this is being recorded. It'll be. I'm uh, interested in knowing. Yeah, I'm certainly interested in knowing more uh, about it. I mean, I know you have been involved in that. I, I just. Um, the audio. I just can't seem. I don't know who to contact. I guess I just haven't really found a way to, to get started to thank know you, enough about it everyone. to see how Badges the students available, uh, match up. So chat. maybe we can so, talk uh, about that uh, offline and. Uh, and we can, you know, bye bye. Uh, you can do something, you, you know, do something. I'm not sure. Um... Yeah, sure. Yeah.